What's up guys, Ian here, coach of your Ladner Lantern, bringing you guys our week 6 match in the UPAD League, taking on Leo and the Mexico City Wallbreakers. Here in week 6, his team consists of the Mega Alakazam, Z Zero Aura, Superior, Nido Queen, Klefki, Z Coma O, Blastoise, Mandibuzz, Moltres, Lycanroc Dusk, Musharna, and Z Wigglytuff. I wasn't expecting the Musharna or the Wigglytuff. Makes sense on the mons that he didn't bring. Moltres didn't really have... <coughs> Excuse me. The best of matchups, unless he was a Z Sunny Day set. Lycanroc Dusk had a reasonable uh, time breaking, like, had a reasonably difficult time breaking through Mega Swampert, but I felt handled the rest of my team okay. So, again, I'm not really surprised to see the six that you see on the screen there. If you haven't seen my team builder, you should definitely, definitely, definitely check that out. I've got some really in depth uh, EV spreads this week for certain mons on his team. Um, and just some like specific role Pokemon that uh, that I would want to deal with that way. So um, as we go into the game here, I'm just going to lead with my Heliolisk. It makes the most sense. It's It threatens almost every single Pokemon on this team. Uh, I'm still not sure if the Zero Aura is going to have close combat or not. I, I sort of have to scout around that set to see if my Heliolisk can actually like deal with it or not. Uh, with my Bulldoze, um, my Bulldoze Hyper Voice strat that I was that I was going for here with my Silk Scarf. But uh, let's see what's going to happen as I lead with the Heliolisk. So as I lead with the Heliolisk, he is going to lead with the Klefki. I figured this was probably okay. I can just get a glare off on it as he sets up a layer of spikes. Spikes are going to be annoying, but I, you know, I've got my Hydra with Defog in the back. I throw off the T-Bolt here, and we find out that he's very spidef as he throws off the Toxic. So, I'm not surprised to see the Toxic, especially for something like Necrozma on my team. It could be quite annoying for him. This probably means he doesn't have T-Wave. Uh, he's definitely got to have a Fairy move to hit the Hydra. Otherwise, he's just, like, eternally walled by Hydra. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if he had, like, Dazzling Gleam on the set. Probably makes the most sense. Either Dazzling Gleam or Player Rough. It really doesn't matter which. Uh, Toxic Spikes, maybe Defog. I'm not entirely sure of where he would want to go with that one. He might also still have Thunder Wave on the set. I'm not sure. Um, there's a few things he could go with there. Magnet Rise even for, for Mega Swampert and Rain. Just a solo to turn or something like that. But he makes a really good double into the Zero Aura on my Torn Switch. Uh, which was really caught me off guard, actually. Uh, I went Torn on the on the Klefki, but uh, he just doubled into the Zero. I was actually very much considering clicking Bulldoze there. Uh, which would have been pretty beneficial for me. I, I would have been able to slow down the Zero Aura and just like blow it back with a Hyper Voice. But uh, instead, we're going to be put in a situation where I have to go into my Gardevoir here. Trace the Volt Absorb on his Bulk Up. Um, he should be able to kill me with a knockoff here uh, if he was Life Orb, but it turns out he's not Life Orb. He's going to bulk up twice and get two shot by my Mooblast. But now that I'm at full health, it's a uh, he's going to click Raw Bounce, and it's a roll for Bounce to kill me here. Uh, and he's not going to get it, but he is going to get the Paralysis, but I'm, luckily I'm going to be able to break through and kill, kill his Zero Aura as he's going to bring out the Superior here. So uh, I clicked Healing Wish this turn just to be able to Healing Wish back up my Heliolisk. It didn't really matter to me. Um, if I took the spike damage or not, but I didn't really want the toxic. And if I bring the Heliolisk in, I can just click Glare now. There's no, there's nothing immune to Glare uh, bar the Klefki, and I don't really think Klefki would want to come in necessarily. Glaring that uh, Alakazam could be really helpful, or glaring the Serp. Uh, so I'm going to click Healing Wish, but he is just going to kill me off here with the Giga Drain. Uh, didn't want to miss the Leaf Storm, I guess. So we'll go Torn here, and I'm going to be able to knock off the Mandibuzz's leftovers, which is super clutch. Uh, and then I'm going to hit a Hurricane here, get a Confusion on the first one. And uh, he'll, he'll throw off the Toxic, which is actually going to end up being really annoying on my Torn later. Uh, but I'll get pretty lucky here by hitting another Hurricane and getting him uh, caught in Confusion. Uh, I'm going to throw off another Hurricane and miss it this time. I just wanted to secure the kill on the Mandibuzz, but Heat Wave or like U-Turn or something probably would have been better. I go for Heat Wave just gets a little bit more damage on the Sklefki. It obviously can't Toxic my my uh, my Torn here, but he's just going to get his other layers of Spikes up uh, as I'm just going to U-Turn out into the Swampert. So... I figure my best play at this point in the game is just get up rocks. Ensure that that mana buzz is going to die, uh, unless he can get a spin off with Blastoise, of course. Um, so Surf comes in to threaten my Swampert, goes for the glare. I, I figured I'd at least scout for it, but Torn sort of like walled this Surf no matter what it wanted to do here. Um, and then I believe I go for a U turn. I believe I go for a U turn, yeah. Because I threatened the Surf out, so catching the Klefki there is fine. And the Klefki is now in range of a T Bolt from my, from my Heliolisk. Uh, or it should be at least, so that's what we go for there. It looked like he clicked Dazzling Gleam there, because uh, he was slower than me. But Zam's going to be able to come in. I'm going to double out into my Swampert to try and sack off my Swampert, as he's going to go for the Calm Mind, uh, which is really scary, actually. So Calm Mind Alakazam is really, really scary here. Obviously, tracing Swift Swim is a valid strat, and that's one of the reasons why I didn't end up bringing Pelipper. I realized that after I recorded the Team Builder. 
as I didn't want the Mega Alakazam just reverse sweeping me with a Swift Swim. Um, although I could have like retraced that with Gardevoir with like a Scarf and done some weird shenanigans where I was still faster than this Alakazam even in rain, but um, yeah, we will end up sacking off the Swampert here. He is obviously threatened now. I, I was clicking Earthquake there, which would have killed him, but he's threatened now. Uh, br to bring a Minocrosma just to get a Psychic off on this thing. So the, the fact that he keeps Calm Minding really puts my Hydra in a bad spot uh, because it means I can't just click Dark Pulse with it. I need to click U-Turn. Um, and so now that he's in plus three, this is really bad. It means I'm going to have to rely on a flinch from the Hydra if I have to. Um, so I decided to go for the Toxic, and I, of course I miss it, right? Uh, there's, there's no reason for me not to just miss the Toxic there. I, I should have clicked Toxic earlier. I thought that he was gonna, just going to kill me with a Shadow Ball. Um, but looking at his moveset, he would have been walled by Hydra if he had Shadow Ball. So uh, it makes sense that he d isn't running it. Uh, he's just going to opt to kill me off here uh, with the Dazzling Gleam before I can get a Toxic off, which is super annoying. But uh, luckily, U-Turn is still a two-shot on this Alkazam, so I can just feel free to sack off my Heliolisk here to the Dazzling Gleam. Um, I felt like I didn't need the Heliolisk to kill the Blastoise still, so uh, I, I can just get a U-Turn off with the Hydra. He actually makes a really good play here by just sacking the Mandibuzz to get in Blastoise on what's a guaranteed U-Turn from me, uh, which is also guaranteed Ice Beam damage from him onto the Torn. Luckily, he's not invested at all, so my Torn takes it really, really well. And I'm going to be able to knock off the item there. The crit didn't matter. He's fully physically defensive, so it, it really didn't matter. Uh, like that, that crit was really irrelevant. But I get to U-turn out into my Hydra here and just click Dark Pulse. Uh, if I get a flinch, it's, that's great. Then I'll be, I, I can obviously live another Ice Beam, right? And Dark Pulse 2 shots him. If I get a flinch, that's great. I have more health on my Hydra. But um, as long as I don't get frozen, I'm fine. Uh, his Serp is healthy enough to live a Dark Pulse. So I have to go back into Torn here. Um, on the glare, I mean, it didn't really matter. The glare, like, probably didn't matter that much. Um, I'm gonna miss a hurricane, which would have killed the Serp as he clicks Dragon Pulse, which does nothing. The Toxic's really the biggest problem here. I'm gonna miss another hurricane <laughs> as he gets the Dragon Pulse off. And then I'm gonna go for a third hurricane here, and he's actually just gonna sack off the Megalakazam just in case I hit it here, I think, or just in case I missed, he wanted to get the Regenerator boost. Uh, but it'll just be a double down as I actually finally hit it on the Zam. Uh, and now the Serp taking another round of rocks actually is going to put it in range of a Draco roll. So we are going to be able to pick up this game 1-0. It was really haxy at the end of the game there. You know, I missed two hurricane, two crucial hurricanes against the Superior. I missed the Toxic against the Alakazam. Uh, I got the Hurricane Confusion into full confusion against the Mandibuzz. You know, that is a 30% chance. So 30% chance of that happening, 30% chance of both of the Hurricanes missing as, as separate as separate events, right? But the Toxic Miss is really what, what cost me a lot of differentials this game. Luckily, we are going to pull out the W, which is pretty huge. It's really huge to pull us back into the playoff race. There's four weeks to go now, and we're 3-3 three and three plus zero. Uh, I'm not super thrilled with how the team's performing, but I think it's a good team. I just think I haven't been playing that optimally around it or i've been caught off guard by sets constantly this uh constantly this season like that calm mind alakazam probably shouldn't have been as big of a threat to me as it was um because i could have just clicked toxic with an across turn one instead of clicking psychic i was clicking psychic to get it in range of a hydra dark pulse but uh toxic was just my better play <laughs> like just wear down the alakazam with the toxic and then make it Put itself in a position where it's going to have to take a Dark Pulse from my Hydra. Um, it turns out Scarf Hydra was a great win con this game, which is really good. Heliolus didn't break as much as I wanted it to, because the Clef Key actually turned out turned out to be a lot bulkier than I thought. And my plan around the Zera Aura almost uh, almost failed me, but Gardevoir, Gardevoir came in clutch there with the kill on the Zera. So I would pick up the nice 1-0 victory over Leo and move our way up to 3 and 3 plus 0. I mentioned in the team builder, I think, but uh, we're not sitting in a very comfortable position in our division. We're, we're like right in the middle, right in the thick of things. Luckily, we beat DS, uh, who's the only person above us in the standings of our of our conference right now, which is, I mean, that's, that's a good thing uh, that we've beaten the one person above us, but... Um, this also, I believe this should move us into top eight in in the in the league, which is which is something else to, to look at. Uh, so next week we take on Clyde and the Inglewood Infernapes. He's got an interesting team. Uh, it's filled with broken stuff, and Carson ended up trading him Lando I with Sheer Force. So he's got really broken stuff um, in like Toxapex, Megalodios, and Snorlax. Uh, and then he also has Bulutran, which is not broken, but it's annoying. And then he got traded the broken Sheer Force Landorus Incarnate. So he's got a lot of really, really, really strong stuff on his team that's going to be hard to prep around. But uh, I'm sure we'll be able to figure out a way around around it. So 
Uh, that's going to be for me. Hopefully you guys enjoyed, and I will catch you guys for week seven against Clyde and the Inglewood Infernapes.